Welcome back to Federal Insights, sponsored by American Military University on Federal News Network. My guest today is Dr. Kevin Harris. He's the Cybersecurity Program Director at American Military University, and I'm your moderator, Scott Massioni. So, you know, we were talking about the election uh, and all the, the needs that we have for cybersecurity. We're talking about the needs for cybersecurity in the private sector, in the public sector. Um, where are the needs in the sense of filling those uh, roles and having people to actually fill that role? Uh, you know, it seems like there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be needed um, to, to do these sorts of jobs. So how are we handling that? Yeah, no, uh, great, Scott. Um, great question. Um, we talked about, you know, IoT devices um, just exploding, the number of devices we have in our house. We talked about our critical infrastructure, the need to um, support um, our utilities and other um, functions such as banking and the financial sector all together. And so who's who's doing it? Um, and so the, the short answer is that the great thing is there are um, jobs available in the field if you're interested in the field. So that that's great. The downside to that is there are too many jobs available. <laughs> uh, so they're close, they're over um, a half a million jobs in the United States alone in the cybersecurity space that remain unfilled. Um, globally, we go up to closer to 3 million jobs in the cybersecurity space that um, are left unfilled. So um, it's, it's an area that, you know, everyone's looking at organizations of different types and sizes, um, want someone that's qualified and willing to help protect their critical digital assets. And so, you know, it, it goes from the um, large uh, fortune, um, you know, whatever company to a small to medium sized business to a government agency. Um, they all need their data protected. And even though we think, you know, a lot of times our lar large companies and our government agencies that this is more important to a small to medium sized business that is um, impacted negatively by a cyber attack, um, they can be put out of business. Um, and so they may not have the insurance coverage um, or the um, capital to recover from such an incident. So it's very important that we look to kind of build this um, capacity um, so that we can um, close some of this skills gap so we don't have these millions of unfulfilled jobs um, in the space. You know, every job that left um, unfilled in the cybersecurity space is a risk to not just that company, but to everyone. And so we really want to make sure that we can find ways to increase the number of individuals that are looking to uh, pursue um, careers, um, you know, in this field. You know, speaking of that, you know, is there a gap between, um, you know, women, minorities who are in this? You know, I know that STEM has not exactly been um, favorable toward uh, those sorts of groups. It's been a very white male dominated sort of area. Um, you know, so how can we bring more people in and, and what is the status of it right now? Yeah, no, exactly. You know, this kind of follows the same pan. You, you said um, STEM all together. Um, exactly. This um, follows the kind of the same pattern as you mentioned about STEM fields all together. Um, the IT field and specifically the cybersecurity field that we're talking about is not um, different. So we talk about women and minority um, groups are um, underrepresented in this field. And so it's, it's another area, you know, that if we build the um, capacity um, of women and minorities that are in STEM, it's not only doing the thing that's right, but it's also helping to address some of these um, critical needs that, you know, we have as a country in this potential field. So, I mean, we just really want to uh, make sure that, um, that there is exposure. I have this saying that I like to say, you know, exposure changes attitudes. And so it's important for, you know, us collectively to make sure that individuals are exposed to um, tech fields, specifically cybersecurity fields early um, and often. Um, so it's not just that one camp that someone took in the summer, but that it's introduced in their curriculum. They're made aware that their degrees, um, when they um, decide that they're gonna go to college, that um, cybersecurity is a degree. And also that that myth is dispelled that someone has to be a mathematician to enter the cybersecurity field. And they are plenty of jobs that, you know, are high math um, functioning um, careers. 
And so those are there, but there's also a lot of other cybersecurity um, jobs that are available that don't require extensive math skills. And so we just want to make sure that, you know, we're, we're, we're working to make sure that this field is inclusive to everybody. And the more we make this field more inclusive, the safer um, we are as a, as a larger community. I know the Defense Department as a whole, you know, what they say is because they're working right now on diversity and inclusion, bringing more in, despite the, the Army being an extremely diverse and inclusive uh, place. Um, you know, one of the reasons that they say they need this is it brings in different backgrounds, different ideas that, you know, just one group of people maybe not would not think to solve a problem in, in one way, but, you know, someone else with a different sort of, uh, you know, background may think differently about it. So, you know, something to definitely keep in mind, I guess. Yeah, definitely. You know, you've got um, organizations out there on, that are really at the forefront um, working with there. I know we've got the International Consortium of Minority Cybersecurity Professionals is one organization that, you know, really works to uh, provide mentorships and works with companies to um, provide internships. Um, you know, there's other organizations, the Urban League. Um, I've recently been able to serve on a panel with both of those organizations working to make sure that this topic, you know, is one that um, is, is a continued conversation. And so, um, as you said, um, a lot of um, agencies and organizations are starting to understand this, that having that, um, you know, just um, diverse um, thought is important. Um, and it's also, I think there's some stats out there that show that companies that do have a more diverse staff, you know, are more profitable. So it's, again, another reason uh, to do it. And, you know, speaking of education and bringing in people, you work for a uh, major university when it comes to this sort of thing. Uh, you know, what, what is American Military University offering uh, when, it, when it comes to this kind of stuff? And how are you keeping up with the, the constantly changing pace of, of IT? Yeah, IT is something that's constantly changing. And so it's something that, you know, we work to identify new areas, um, you know, that we can um, provide, you know, um, curriculum around. And when we talk about the critical infrastructure, that's an area that we've recently identified of needing um, and uh, that there's being a need. And so we've looked at um, in 2021, we'll be adding a concentration in our uh, cybersecurity program that focuses on critical infrastructure. And then also with, um, we um, have an industry advisory committee that we work with in our different um, programs to identify um, programs or times that we wanna make these improvements. And another area um, is privacy and surveillance. And so that's another concentration that we're looking at adding um, in 2021 is a privacy and surveillance concentration. So to kind of take a look at, you know, in addition to technically when we can do something, what are the implications of doing it and what are some of um, the areas that are impacted uh, differently when a new technology or innovation is implemented. And Kevin, I understand that American Military University has been designated a uh, cyber center of excellence by NSA, the Department of Homeland Security. How does that work into the way that your school runs and then also the way that people perceive it? Thanks, Scott. The designation that we received by the NSA of being a center of academic excellence for cyber defense is something that we're really proud of. Our uh, program curriculum and our objectives of the program were reviewed and really reinforced our work with our industry advisory committee to develop a program that is in line with industry needs so that our students are prepared when they leave us to seek employment. And so it's something that we're proud of. And so, you know, our students that leave us are something that we continue to be proud of when they are transition to alum alumni. So thank you for mentioning that. Well, Kevin, it's been a real pleasure talking to you about everything. We really appreciate your time. I really appreciate it. And thanks for giving me the opportunity, Scott. Dr. Kevin Harris, he's the Cybersecurity Program Director at American Military University. I'm your moderator, Scott Massioni, and you're listening to Federal News Network. For more on this discussion, visit federalnewsnetwork.com and search American Military University.